having normal blood pressure is the biggest way to prevent having a heart attack. So if you have high blood pressure and are trying to lower it, what's the number one most important thing you should do? Wait, before you listen any further, push pause and in the comments, guess what is the right answer for lowering blood pressure? You might be smarter than your doctor. If you answered salt, your doctor would have said the same thing. And although lowering salt can lower blood pressure, it is not the best long-term answer. Yes, it's true that if you increase the amount of salt that you're taking in, your blood pressure will go up. And the reverse is true. When you decrease the amount of salt you're normally taking in, your blood pressure will go down. Unfortunately, that is only part of the process of why your blood pressure is elevated and how to get it lower forever. Salt does not work in the long run. I tell everybody going on the ketogenic diet to add salt to things. I tell them to put salt in their coffee. I tell them to suck on salt rocks. So why would I do that if I knew that it was gonna raise their blood pressure? Well, the answer is this is just a portion of the chemistry shifts that are going to happen if you're going to be sustainably healthy. The salt story is only temporary. When you increase that salt at the beginning of a ketogenic diet, your kidneys will take notice and they will ramp up their job. They can't do it immediately, but they will adapt rather quickly, especially if you're healthy. Most of the people that come to see me, they aren't so healthy and they've had quite a few trips around the sun. So because of their poor state of health and their age, we must do this a lot slower. Adding salt to the ketogenic diet is something I ask them to do in small increments. I add a little bit of salt and then hold that salt intake for four to five days. You will see the blood pressure will rise during those first few days. And then their kidneys adapt. Their kidneys begin to take that salt and process it faster. Kidneys upregulate the receptors that manage the salt because of the increased salt intake. Once it adapts, the blood pressure normalizes back to what it was before the salt changed. This happens in the reverse too. When you first lower that salt intake, those receptors in your kidneys don't have much of a job to do and they will downregulate. Once the body has adapted to this new salt intake, blood pressure goes back to whatever it was before you manipulated the salt. Your doctors know this is going to happen too. They will ask you to reduce the salt and then they'll check your blood pressure within a week of adjusting that salt intake. Your blood pressure is probably lower after that, but several weeks later, it's normalized. So they'll ask you to do it again and they ask you to lower the salt further and further and further, always having the consequence that your blood pressure normalized. There becomes a tipping point where you just can't lower the salt any further. Your body will crave it. And no matter how strict your doctor says you should be, the cravings will win and the patient takes in more salt than was prescribed. So all of my patients, whether they're healthy or not, will have a short-term adjustment to how their blood pressure looks when raising or lowering salt. The folks that aren't so healthy take a little longer to adapt to the new situation. And because of their poor health, I ask them to go slower, but I don't skip that advice. If you're on the ketogenic diet, decreasing your salt will temporarily decrease your blood pressure, but it will not lead to that prevented heart attack. You need salt to hydrate your cells. This is true whether you're sustaining health or repairing from poor health. People think if they hydrate that adding water is all they need, but they need water plus salt. Blood sugar is 10 times more impactful on lowering blood pressure than that little game your doctor plays with salt. Yeah, lower blood sugar. And if you think brown rice and quinoa are the way you lower your blood sugar, I disagree. Take a look at this next video to learn how I recommend you properly measure your blood sugar and how I teach patients to do it without me. I'll see you there.